The Partnership for Patients Initiative has identified areas of focus that when addressed will help us reduce preventable readmissions and hospital acquired conditions from across the country. Today we're going to focus on a persistent problem in hospitals, catheter associated urinary tract infection or CAUTI. Now Sanjay, let's get started with you, your national expertise. Help us understand CAUTI, give us a perspective we all should know. Sure. Um, well, CAUTI is common, costly and morbid. In fact, Two million Americans develop a healthcare associated infection each year, and about 100,000 will die because of that infection. A third of all healthcare associated infections are catheter associated urinary tract infection, making it the world's most common hospital acquired infection. And the annual cost is about $350 million. So let's talk more about one system that's been very successful at this work, and Ken. That's North Shore University Health System. You've been successful and have great results, 25% reduction, which I think, Sanjay, you had said is a, a national goal that's pretty remarkable to achieve. How did you do it? All quality improvement has to focus on three things. It has to focus on our people. How do we actually set the stage, create a culture, and then reinforce that with daily visits to the climate? Second is process. How do we perform our work? How do you do your work when you come to, to work every day? The third is, how might we harness technology and use it to enable those of us to work smarter with better processes of care? So Ken, before we go any further, let's see North Shore's quality tenants in action. BHA recently had an opportunity to visit North Shore University Health System, and we talked to their leaders and frontline managers about how they approach the problem of reducing county. Let's hear what they had to say. A couple of years ago, uh, the Department of Infection Control took a single day and decided to do what's called a prevalence study, which means we went around at all of our hospitals that day, uh, went into each patient's room and examined whether the patient had a Foley catheter, whether there was an order placed for that device to be there, uh, whether the, the nurse and the physician knew why the Foley catheter was in place and whether that use was appropriate or not. Uh, and what we determined is that in a large uh, number of cases, the knowledge wasn't there, the rationale wasn't there, and when the rationale was there, it wasn't consistent with evidence-based uh, guidelines and recommendations. So that's how we identified that we had an issue that needed to be addressed. And I can actually reflect back to one of the very first meetings I sat at as, as the chief nursing officer. And I can remember sitting at a meeting when a physician was presenting our, our, cat, our infection rates and our issues with catheter care. And to say that I was appalled is probably putting it mine early because I was, to me, catheter care is part of nursing care. I think there had been some discussion at this meeting of putting together people, what they call a catheter team of people that would, on a daily basis, like people that manage IVs, would go around and check them. I said, no, no, no. You don't divide up the body and have a catheter team or a team of people that manage the catheter. That's part of our nursing care. And I knew at that meeting that I needed to, to do something and to change it and got very involved very early on with the process. And then really just keeping a very consistent, thorough eye on what we were doing with the catheters. And people said, well, it's a convenience for nursing. And I'd say, well, that's not what patient care is about. We're not here to make our lives better. Our lives will be better because our patients' lives are better. The responsibility from my team was we need to make sure that A, we have reliable and accurate data and information to provide feedback in terms of how we're doing and to sustain that, that accuracy in a timely manner over time so that we can determine have we achieved our goals. We determined that this was actually a, a hospital-wide issue I and mean, a hospital-wide initiative. So in order to do that, we need to know every patient every day who has a Foley catheter in place. In order to do that, systematically and be able to compile that information together, you really need electronic medical record and the ability to do that. And we had done that uh, over a series of a number of years in infection control and uh, developing a, a protocol where we could extract that information for the electronic medical record. The electronic medical record is uh, embedded in everything that we do, in all of our workflows. It has become integral to the operation of the clinical organization of the clinical enterprise and therefore also to the improvements in quality and patient safety. 
The electronic medical record provides lots of opportunities for us to, to assist with standardization as we go forward to really assist from a patient safety perspective. We put in place in EPIC, in our electronic medical record, some kind of a reminder to the phys you know, physician assistants and residents to say that this patient has a Foley catheter. Do you need, to, are we gonna discontinue it or what? And it has a drop down options. We have graphs that uh, come from infectious disease. They monitor where we're at in terms of uh, Foley days and our goal to decrease it by 20% and each unit has that goal in their dashboard. So we have to report that every month and we have seen a decline in the, the number you know, of Foley days and we've met our goals well below the goal that we set. There were a lot of, you know, aha uh -huh moments. I think one of us was this, this, this whole misconception that nurses um, wanted catheters in, that it was, it was, it saved us time. It was part of, you know, something we should do. I think there was probably some aha uh -huh moments when patients from the emergency room, who we used to think, well, just routinely, that was part of what you did when you admitted a patient. We started to change some practices that had been. When you would ask people why, why was it that way, it, it was. There was not a real lot of science behind why we did it. It was mostly get back to that convenience. It was well understood from day one that this was an issue of importance that everyone was taking seriously. And sometimes with uh, performance improvement initiatives, you get that initial uh, push and then it either flat lines out or sometimes it actually starts to go back up when you're not really paying attention to it. After this first year, we've seen nothing but sustained improvement over time, where we've actually seen a continual decrease in, in eliminating the use of unnecessary devices. That's where a lot of the hard work is, actually, is in keeping our focus not only on the new endeavor that we're doing, but also maintaining the performance from the, the prior. And to the extent that the system, the electronic medical record, can assist us in doing that by helping us to manage that uh, all the better. The process is interchangeable between organizations. In fact, it was helpful for us because during this process, we actually onboarded a fourth hospital here at North Shore, and we took the same model that we applied here and took it to that hospital and began seeing the same effects. I think this is seen as a great opportunity to move forward with this. We can actually raise it. Um, so, you know, it's evidence-based practice and it's a magnet hospital, and it's an, it's an expectation that we are looking at how we do things and see areas of improvement. We own this and we're gonna, we're gonna drive this. Uh, so, you know, it just became part of the culture. The reason why I'm here for 20 some years is because of the culture. Um, the Department of Nursing has a strong voice with the administration. And that's why I stayed. Uh, it's very important for me that uh, nursing voice is heard and we have strong leadership, it's a transformational leadership. So I think we're making a difference with the patients and I think that's important for them to understand and I think they do. I mean patients entrust so much to nurses and we have a responsibility, we're so privileged to care for them. A patient walks through the doors of the hospital and entrusts themselves to you, we really need to protect that trust. You have a great concept called tight, loose, tight that when I first heard it I think we all could resonate with it. What we've seen is that high performers gravitate towards organizations and units that use a tight, loose, tight um, scheme because they want to be told what is expected of them. They want to actually come up with some of those expectations. They then want to be rewarded because they usually meet those expectations, but they don't want to be told how to do it. If we can remember only one thing from everything we've talked about today, what should we remember? Sanjay, I'll start with you. Um, well, I think the most important thing is to remember that preventing county is a team sport. Mm -hmm. Nurses can't do it alone, docs can't do it alone, leaders can't do it alone, infection preventionists can't do it alone. What would you say, Ken? I think for us it's relatively simple. If I could ask you to remember anything today, it's the right people using the right process enabled by technology is really the, the answer. 